La fortuna era de 205 millones de dólares. Dos noches y días enteros se pasaron estos funcionarios contando el dinero. This is the story of how the largest cash bust in the history of the war on drugs didn't actually involve any drugs being recovered at all. La llamada Operación Dragón, sucedida en el 2007, implicó al empresario chino-mexicano Chen Li Yegón. ¿Copela o cuellos? It's the story of how a Chinese-Mexican businessman went from being celebrated by world leaders to being imprisoned in multiple countries. How Las Vegas casinos used to help cartels launder hundreds of millions of dollars and of how the drugs we take actually get made. Some stories of the war on drugs are violent. Some are tragic. And some are just plain weird. This is the story of Zhen Li Yegon. Zhen Li Yegon was born in Shanghai in 1963. In the 90s, he moved to Mexico and founded several companies. In particular, the highly successful chemical importer Unimed Farm Chem Mexico. He was a well-known figure, and it was considered a national story when President Vincente Fox personally presented him with citizenship papers in 2002. Señor Ye Chely. Officially making him a Mexican citizen. But then, everything changed. Ayer mismo, decomisamos más de 250 millones de dólares en efectivo, que es el mayor decomiso no solo de México, sino quizá del mundo. In 2007, Mexican federal agents raided Zhen Li's Mexico City mansion, and inside, they found more than $200 million. The money was mostly in $100 bills. There were piles of cash lining the corridors, stuffed into wardrobes, and strewn throughout the entire house. All in all, the cash weighed over two tons, and reportedly took the agents two full days just to carry it out of the house. Along with various international currencies, there was also a small arsenal of automatic weapons and seven luxury cars. Mexican police originally reported that 175,000 Mexican pesos had also been discovered. But when journalists pointed out the video footage appeared to show a lot more cash than that, that figure was hastily revised to 1.5 million. The DEA hailed this as a major triumph calling it the largest single drug cash seizure the world had ever seen, and the ultimate jackpot for law enforcement. But what was going on here? Why was a random expat businessman in Mexico City now the ultimate jackpot for the DEA? Well, through his company Unimed Farm Chem, Zhen Li had been importing the chemicals ephedrine and pseudoephedrine from labs in China. These are products that go into making common cold medicines, like Sudafed, but they're also the most important precursor chemicals for making crystal meth. The suspicion here was that Zhen Li was in fact a ranking member of the Sinaloa cartel, bringing these chemicals over from Chinese labs and supplying them to organized criminal groups across Mexico. I have a contact with the me I have to all that I need. I don't know where I need to go. I don't know where I need but at the time his house was being raided, Zhen Li Yegon wasn't actually there. He was in Vegas. Zhen Li was a big fan of high stakes poker and a particularly valuable patron of the Sands Hotel. In fact, according to the US Department of Justice, by 2007, he was the single largest all cash upfront gambler the casino had ever had and he claimed to have lost $157 million there. The Sands appreciated this business so much, he even laid on a complimentary Rolls Royce. What many people believe is that Zhen Li's high rolling gambling habit was actually part of an elaborate but fairly common money laundering scheme through which organized crime groups clean their dirty cash. He knows that he can bring cash from selling precursors for crystal meth to a Sinaloa cartel drug trafficker. Take that cash to Vegas and then get back checks that you can put into banks and it's a check from Las Vegas. So it's kind of like something which you can cover. So it's a way of laundering money. Under US law, casinos are meant to alert authorities when they come across suspicious activity. But not only did the Sands not report Zhen Li, they actively courted him. And not just by giving him luxury cars. They allowed Zhen Li to buy chips through transferring money to the casino via anonymous services in Mexico and Hong Kong and even allowed him access to separate bank accounts usually used by the hotel to pay pilots, all in order to help him obscure the sources of the money flowing in. After a case initiated by the DEA following the Zhen Li raid, the Sands Casino agreed to return 
$47.4 million to the US Treasury. Zhen Li himself was eventually arrested by a swarm of DEA agents while eating at a small restaurant in Maryland in July of 2007. Once again, the DEA heralded this as a major success, putting out a statement that, with the arrest of Zhen Li Egon, we've apprehended not only the man behind the money, but the man behind the meth. But for all the fanfare, it wasn't long before the DEA's case began to fall apart. Key witnesses recanted their testimony, the Chinese government refused to hand over documents, and crucially, for a guy accused of being a kingpin of the meth trade, no meth was ever actually found. Though precursor chemicals were discovered in Unimed Farmchem's warehouse, these could have been part of the company's legitimate business, and there were issues with how Mexican investigators had handled the samples. A federal judge eventually dismissed the US case against Zhen Li in August of 2009, but he remained in jail while trying to fight extradition to Mexico, where he was obviously also wanted. Okay, all well, the pseudofedrins in Mexico, but where is the meth supplier in America? Where is the contact person, you know? The judge is focused on the defective link in their evidence. And if there's criminal activity in Mexico, let the Mexican government go after him. And this is where it gets fun. Despite having beaten the American charges, Zhen Li had to try to explain why he had 205 million bucks worth of $100 bills just lying around his house. While Zhen Li admitted the money had originated with the cartels, he claimed that he'd been ordered to hide it by the Mexican politician Javier Lozano Alacón, then Secretary of Labor, because it was meant to be used for President Felipe Calderón's election campaign. Yo conoce señor Javier Alacón, primera semana de mayo 2006. He enseñé me dos maletas. Yo abrí uno, es lleno de dinero, a 100 billetes. Y luego me dice, copela o cuellos. He claimed that this order had come with a death threat and that it meant he should not be extradited as he could never receive a fair trial in Mexico. And I say, ¿por qué? He said, ahora tú descubras todos los uh, uh, secretos de nosotros. Entonces, únicamente es copela. No copela, a cuello. No hay, no hay otra. The famous phrase he said in the interview was copera o cuello, which means cooperate or you'll be strangled. And this became a big joke around that time. Zhen Li's claims may sound ludicrous, but Mexican politics is so wildly corrupt that many people in Mexico actually believed him. A poll by the newspaper Diario Reforma showed that a majority of respondents either believed Zhen Li or at least didn't doubt that the government was in some way involved. Mexico is extremely corrupt and everyone immediately has suspicion of the government. Because if the government says the sky's blue, people will say, no, it's not, it's green. The Mexican government, again, has done a marvelous job of painting our guy as a member of the drug cartel. We have filed for asylum. So I think we're going to have a five to 10 year battle on, on that extradition request. Zhen Li managed to fight extradition to Mexico for nine years, but eventually American courts ruled against him and he was flown back to face trial in 2016. El día de hoy, el prófugo de la justicia mexicana, Zhen Li Yegon, fue entregado en extradición. Se le considera probable responsable de la comisión de los delitos de delincuencia organizada, posesión de arma de fuego de uso exclusivo del ejército, armada y fuerza aérea, y operaciones con recursos de procedencia ilícita. But even now, five years on, Zhen Li Egon has still not had his day in court. Associates of his business, including his wife, have been found guilty. But as of last year, he's still being held on remand, awaiting trial on money laundering and weapons charges. In 2019, the Mexican government auctioned off his now infamous mansion for 102 million pesos, or over 5 million US dollars. The case of Shen Li Yegung is really emblematic about the money laundering and the way that money moves in the drug trade. In the United States, some meth user spending $50 on a bag of meth and then say $30 of it going south over the border while $20 is kept by a local dealer. $10 of that staying in Mexico being used to bribe police to pay hitmen. $10 going over to China, being used to buy the precursors for crystal meth. So you see the money going through all these directions and it becomes like all money is dirty money. 
To this day, no methamphetamine has actually been recovered or conclusively linked to his operations. Like the war on drugs itself, the story of Zhen Li Yegon is a story of globalization. A Chinese businessman who became a Mexican citizen, allegedly working with cartels to flood the US with drugs, all while laundering money through Las Vegas casinos and accusing Mexican politicians of high-level corruption. He's not the first, and certainly not the most violent person thought to have made millions of dollars through the illicit drug trade, but he definitely won't be the last. As long as the war on drugs continues, these global pipelines of money will just keep on growing. We'd like to congratulate drugs for winning the war on drugs.